Okay, aloha. Welcome to lecture number two of embryology. Today we are going to talk about the female reproductive cycle, transportation of the gametes, and maturation and viability of the gametes. So to start off with, um, let's go over the phases of the menstrual cycle, okay? Um, there are basically four phases. We have the proliferative phase, the luteal phase, the ischemic phase, and the menstrual phase, right? So let's start with the proliferative phase. During the proliferative phase, we have follicle stimulating hormone causing the um, follicle to mature within the ovary, okay? Once that follicle matures to a certain point, it begins producing estrogen. That estrogen causes the wall of the endometrium to thicken and become more vascular, right? As the levels of estrogen inc increase, uh, some new hormones enter the scene, luteinizing hormone, um, <clears throat> then causes the follicle to rupture. Once that follicle ruptures, that's called ovulation. Uh, once that thing ruptures, the follicle then transforms into this other structure known as the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is glandular tissue. This glandular tissue produces estrogen and progesterone, which maintains the wall of the uterus uh, in the event that the egg wants to implant, okay? If the egg does not implant, then this corpus luteum degenerates into a ball of scar tissue inside the ovary, stops producing hormones. Once progesterone and estrogen are no longer being produced, all of these wonderful spiral arteries at the base of the, um, uh, in the basal layer of the endometrium start to constrict. This uh, limits the blood flow to the endometrial wall, which causes it to die of ischemia. As it dies, it sloughs off. As it sloughs off, the arteries get broken and they begin to bleed. And then the blood flow washes everything out. Um, this is called the menstrual phase, right? During the menstrual, menstrual phase, follicle stimulating hormone begins to increase, causing the next follicle to begin to mature. And the whole process begins all over again, okay? So we're gonna look, um, a, oops, sorry. We're gonna look a little more in depth at the uh, hormones that are, uh, what's going on with the hormones during this process, okay? So like I said, we have during the menstrual phase, we have follicle stimulating hormone increasing, right? This is causing the follicle to mature. Once the follicle matures to a certain point, estrogen begins to increase and it begins to increase pretty sharply as you can see on the graph there. Um, this causes the wall of the endometrium to thicken and become more vascular. Now, eventually this estrogen is gonna reach a critical threshold. Once it reaches that critical threshold, there is a spike, a huge spike in this hormone called luteinating, luteinizing hormone. They call this the LH surge. Now, it might be on a quiz somewhere, so it might be worth writing down that within 24 hours of the LH surge, ovulation is going to occur, right? So within 24 hours of luteinizing hormone surge, ovulation is gonna occur. The uh, follicle ruptures, releasing the egg into the, uh, into the fallopian tubes. And once that happens, the follicle then turns into this corpus luteum. Corpus luteum then begins to produce progesterone. The purpose of the corpus luteum, which by the way, is why we call it the luteal phase, okay? During the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is present. The sole purpose of the corpus luteum is to maintain the endometrial wall so that the egg can implant if it gets fertilized, okay? That might also be something that you will want to remember. It is called the luteal phase because of the presence of the corpus luteum. And the primary job of the corpus luteum is to produce progest progesterone and estrogen in order to maintain the endometrium, okay? If the egg is not fertilized, if the egg is not fertilized, then progesterone and estrogen decrease rather sharply. And this causes ischemia in the endometrium which causes it to die and slough off, which begins menses, okay? 
So it might be important to remember on a quiz someday that if the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum degenerates and progesterone decreases, which begins menses. Okay, but if the egg is fertilized, which also might be worth remembering for a quiz at some point, if the egg is fertilized, HCG begins to be produced by the egg. So the egg begins to produce this other hormone called HCG. It stands for human chorionic gonadotropin. From this point on, we'll call it HCG. The egg begins to produce HCG. This HCG maintains the corpus luteum and keeps it producing progesterone and estrogen, which maintains the endometrial wall until the placenta is big enough to produce its own hormones. All right. So for purposes of what might be on a quiz, if the egg is fertilized, HCG maintains the corpus luteum so that it does not degenerate. So the primary purpose of HCG is to maintain the corpus luteum. Okay, hopefully you guys got that. Now, let's talk about how the egg gets to the uterus. Okay, the follicle matures and ruptures, right? Ultimately, boom, it explodes, pops like a balloon. When that happens, all of the fluid that the egg is sitting in starts to spill out into the abdominal cavity. The fembria of the infidibulum then scoop it up and pull it into the uh, fallopian tube. As this fluid is being pulled into the fallopian tube, it pulls the egg with it. Once the egg is inside the fallopian tube, peristaltic contractions take over and move the egg up through the uh, fallopian tube and eventually into the uterine cavity. All right. And if we're lucky, it bumps into a wall and implants and all kinds of wonderful stuff happens after that that we'll get into later, okay? Now, sperm uh, initially, uh, after the man ejaculates, hopefully is deposited very close to the cervix, okay? Uh, the closer to the cervix, the better. Why? Because sperm are very, very, very small and they have a really long way to swim relative to their size. So initially, they get through the cervix by swimming. They beat those little tails until they uh, finally manage to get through the cervix. Once they have gone through the cervix and they arrive into the uterine cavity, there are prostaglandins that are present in the seminal fluid. And those prostaglandins cause the uterus to begin to pulsate in a peristaltic fashion. This creates waves in the fluid inside the uterine cavity and the sperm surf the waves all the way up into the fallopian tubes where they meet the eggs, right? Um, just getting from outside the cervix into the uterine cavity is a really long way for something that small to swim. And swimming is slow. Surfing is much, much, much faster. So these peristaltic waves serve to tremendously increase the speed with which the sperm are able to arrive at the egg and meet it in the, in the fallopian tube, okay? That's actually gonna do it for today's lecture. I know that was pretty short, lucky you. Um, there are gonna be much longer lectures in the future, so buckle up. Uh, it gets really cool and really fun, so. Uh, and I hope that you guys find it as fascinating as I find it. Um, we are going to have a quiz. Uh, the quiz is going to be on lectures one and lecture two, which, which covers chapter one and two. Um, we are going to have a, uh, a Zoom session. The dates and times of the Zoom sessions should be posted in your assignments on Canvas and I'll try to email you guys those dates and times as well. Um, but it's really worth your while if you're, it's, they're not required, but it is really worth your while if you come to those Zoom sessions, because during that Zoom session, I'm gonna try to clear up any questions you might have on the material that we've covered so far. And I'm also gonna give a really excellent review on the upcoming quiz. So hopefully I will see you there. Until then, aloha.